Today in the video, I'm going to show you how to make your own wooden tools. These are some of the tools I use mostly on my videos. And I really like these tools. And there are some tools that are better than others. And most of you guys notice that I keep using the same tools over and over. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on just wooden tools. These I bought from Sculpture House a very long time ago. And I want to show you each of these and why and how we're going to be making it. First up, this is a very interesting tool because it's pretty flat and I like this kind of flatness. You can make a variety of these tools that have just uh, smaller flat edges and it works really great. But on the other side, it always helps to have two sides with different tools. It's a curved edge. You can see that. That's the important thing about these water sculpting tools. You want this kind of curved edge. And it's really nice to kind of hold and grip. It's small, very easy. The other tool that I use often is this. This is a medium sized tool, but we are also going to be making a large tool, but it's the same sort of thing. Let's look at this. This is from Sculpture House. I think this tool might cost you about 20 something dollars. So it's very expensive. This is the largest I have. So when you look at the side here, you see the curved edge. That's the important part. This doesn't have to be as nice as it is. You know, they spend quite a bit of time on it. And as you go this way, it tapers off and rounds off because you're going to need a ferrule. And unfortunately, I don't know where to get these larger ferrules. You can get them from Hobby Lobby, it's slightly smaller. And then this, this is a wire that's very difficult to get, but what you can get, and I've seen used, is a bicycle spoke. You can get aero bicycle sc uh, spokes that are flat, and then I'm gonna show you how to notch these out. Another tool we're gonna be making is this. Now this one doesn't have the wire loops on the both sides because they usually break. That's the problem. Like we're going to be making tools that are better than the ones you buy. So this is a, just a handle with two loop tools on each side. And we are going to be making a couple of these. So when you look at the shape, it's like round, bigger in the middle, tapers off to the sides. And it's fairly easy to make, but we are going to be making a few of these. So this is the tool I like to use most often. It's a round and it's a small version, but it's the exact same sort of tool. So it's flat on one side, but it's kind of curved up. This is the business end of the tool. This is where you're going to do most of your modeling. And on the other side, it's curved. But on the other side, you have this. This is broken. I've been repairing it. These ferrules tend to break all the time. And I'm going to also show you how to make your own wire. The wire is very important, but it's very difficult to do right. So you see there's an angle, it's not flat. And depending if you're left-handed or right-handed, you might want it the opposite way. So let's get started on making some of these tools. This is the wood we'll be using. This is oak. Oak is pretty nice, but this is even better. That's cherry. So you can make it out of whatever wood that you have. You can even make it out of like wood flooring. This is firewood that I have for uh, the winter. Uh, Oak is easier to carve than cherry, but cherry is going to give you a really good tool. So in order to make this, I usually, you kind of have to visualize it. In a way, it's sculpting in wood. So if I'm going to make this tool, obviously I need to kind of size it up and take a pencil and kind of determine where is it going to be. This can be used for like two or three tools if you're careful with the amount of uh, waste. So that's one. And now I want to take this oak. Oak is a lot easier. So one of the things I've found is that a nice vise like this helps quite a bit. And I have this machine here with a um, carving wheel. This is for wood sculpture. 
and it works pretty well. So here's the uh, the wheel, and when you plug it in, it should be should be pretty good. So this is our first thing. You're gonna have to wear some gloves and a mask because you don't wanna be breathing in all of this stuff. We're gonna take our oak. working around and getting that nice round shape. It takes some time to do this. So I'm just going to fast forward and get to the roundness. Now we are on the belt sander. I have it turned upside down. It's kind of like a very rough um, belt. So let's do this. So now I'm going to show you how to make my favorite tool, which is this. It's a scoop. I already have the block shaped, but it's too big. So what I want to do is see if I can cut it in half. Just There we go. So now that I have it more or less a little flat, determine the side that is facing up. And now we're going to start curving it. So right about here, I'm going to start removing this. We got the curved edge here we still have a lot to remove so uh, so it's going to be like this you just usually i just kind of eyeball it but you could take a pencil and draw in where you want to cut all right so now i'm going to reverse it and in the back of your tool, it's going to be absolutely round. So one side is just more for holding and making it look and feel good. So this part, we're actually going to smooth it all out.
pretty much done. The only thing that we have to do now is stain it and perhaps just the oak you can stain, but the cherry, it, the wood looks so nice that it's not even worth it. You can do a lot of stuff with it, burnish it or whatever, but this is what I, uh, I usually tend to do. You just have to measure this side to put a wire tool. And um, I do have a couple of ferrules. And then I'm going to show you guys in another video how to make the wire end tool. With, because it's very useful to have the round for the wood for modeling. And then having a wire tool for scraping.
Today in the video, I'm going to show you how to make your own wooden tools. These are some of the tools I use mostly on my videos. And I really like these tools. And there are some tools that are better than others. And most of you guys notice that I keep using the same tools over and over. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on just wooden tools. These I bought from Sculpture House a very long time ago. And I want to show you each of these and why and how we're going to be making it. Okay, so we have three tools we just made, but we're not done. So we got the round one that's going to double like this. The only reason I kept it really large at the ends is because my ferrules are a little bit different. That's the metal part that crimps in the wire. And then we have this one and this one. This one's absolutely my favorite tool. Very high quality stuff, but we're not done. So you need to take some sort of rasp, kind of feel around and make sure that it's really smooth, especially this part. This part has to be really nice without any texture. Keep it really nice and smooth. So I'm just going to take this rasp and I'm just going to go around the entire shape of this. And this way I'm going to finesse the shape of it. It's very sharp too. Like this is a much higher quality wood than the ones that you would get at a store. So take great care. You know, it is kind of cool just building your own sculpting tools. I never realized it, but now I've been doing my own because if you buy it from Sculpture House, Sculpture's got, Sculpture House has got some of the best tools I've ever seen, but they are very expensive. So learn to make your own tools. And the best part is that you might spend like a week building tools out of like 10 years. So it's not really like a, uh, a big deal. And you're going to get much better tools if you do them on your own. This is really beautiful wood too. You might want to like play around with different woods, but you definitely want a hardwood for sculpting, especially with water-based uh, sculpture, because the water is going to get inside the wood and you don't want it to mold and stuff. So after this, we're going to put a coating on it to help it. All right, so now take some sandpaper and usually I do this like when I'm watching a show or whatever, or just bored. And I like to make it as smooth as possible. I want this to feel really good on your hands. There's a lot of videos on YouTube making wire tools, scraping tools with uh, music wire. And it's guitar wire. And I've done that before, but the problem is when you use it on water-based clay, it rusts and breaks. So the wood tools, it's the type of thing that they will never go bad. These tools are extremely durable, but the wire tools, like most of these, like as you can see, they have fallen off, broken off, rusted off. And that's the reason I started to want to build my own is because the wire stuff just tends to break. This is the oak. It's a lot softer. And I will we'll use this to get the ferrules in there. These are some other tools that I have. This is the ferrule that I'm going to be using. It's just a bunch of brass pipes. And that's actually a pretty good size. I'm just going to take it out, put it here. So I'll just taper it off a little bit. You can get the brass pipes from Hobby Lobby. There we go. Oak cuts a whole lot better than cherry, that's for sure. So that would be a ferrule. And of course, it's going to have the wire like that, but I'm not going to do the wire just yet. We might have to cut like a little bit of a slit on the wood after we stain it, but that's pretty much the right size for that. And it fits on this one, so boom. So that's that. Now I'm just going to 
it's a lot of work just for a tool, but there's going to be a certain amount of satisfaction knowing that you're sculpting with your own tools. And for the final wood protection, this is what I'm going to use. This is like an oil-based ultimate uh, polyurethane. I actually use this on my front door and it's really good. It's also very expensive. This is not going to let any water get into the wood, so it's going to stay a whole lot better or whatever. I'm just going to let that dry. Put this other end. This is just one very easy way of getting the polyurethane in here. With the oak, it actually uh, is better to stain it because it's not that nice of a color. And of course, you want to clean everything out. Don't leave like globs of this polyurethane. And that's pretty much it. Now the next step is simply waiting for it to dry. And in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to make the wire tools so you're, you can make your own scraper. So now that you have all your tools made, the next step is just letting it dry. You can use them after they dry, after 24 hours with the polyurethane. So that's pretty much it for this video, how to make some wooden tools. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.